React is the world's most popular JavaScript framework. It's used as a foundational component to a lot of different systems, including Next.js. So it even goes further than that. We see that it can be used over here to make video rendering. Yeah, that's right. You can actually select render frames using React. Uh, now you also have React Native for building mobile apps that compile to native application code. React is huge, is used everywhere. It's a huge library that everyone loves and uses on the web. There is a major drawback and problem, however. One of the most popular uses for React is React DOM, which is for single-page web-based applications. And most uh, of single-page web, like, they, they all use this. They use React. It is the industry standard. Here's the problem. It tends to be slow. You have poor user experiences, quite a large bundle of JavaScript that the user has to load and it parses on their system. It slows the system down. So loading the page initially takes a long time, but also clicking around and navigating is still pretty slow in many cases due to just the general re-rendering that occurs. Taking a look at how they plan to address this core team member, Andrew Clark here describes that their main plan is to use a compiler uh, to achieve comparable performance to improve the overall user experience. Now, this is definitely very possible, and there are libraries that they are working on now to make this. Preact.js has its, it, it figured it out. They figured out how to make React.js a lot faster by rewriting the core specifically for web-based applications. So single page applications, when you're browsing the web, you'll have a nice GUI front end where you can click around and you'll have you know this you know dashboard-like experience. Single page application experiences with React DOM can be re improved significantly using Preact. And that's the whole goal behind Preact is to create a fast alternative to React for your single page applications. Their goal is to have a better performance overall to render quickly and efficiently, have a small file size. That's critical from a JavaScript perspective because every single byte within that JavaScript file is gonna slow down that user experience. And also, you know, in an alliance with performance, you need to have efficiency. You don't have a lot of navigation pauses and things like that. So efficiency with um, avoiding GC garbage collection, right? Gotta avoid garbage collection. They also aim to have high compatibility, not 100% compatibility with React, but for the most part, you can uh, get full compatibility using uh, Preact instead of React. A YouTube comment here we have with Nexovec has asked uh, to say, hey, let's check this out. Let's look at what really is that difference in the real world scenario when we're comparing React and Preact if you can choose between the two or if you have an existing application and you want to migrate that React DOM code base over to Preact, you'll be able to do it. But is it even worth it? That's like the whole, that's the whole idea. And yeah, there is, there's, there is a nice little bump there, some, a little bit of benefit you get. All right, I have two build examples here for us, one at the top and one at the bottom. At the top here, we have React, where we built just a regular Hello World application. We see that with just just vanilla React and a Hello World application with you know single page app, React is we're going to see right around here 46.57 kilobytes and a 1.78 kilobyte chunk. Now that is a lot just for a Hello World application. Obviously, you want to leverage as much as you can from React to uh, and the various component ecosystems in order to uh, justify such a large bundle. Now this is after gzip, right? So we get this 46.57 kilobyte main foundation uh, after gzip. That's still a lot of JavaScript. Now we look down here at Preact and we see that we are at 5.94 kilobytes, significantly less for that foundational library. And we, in addition to the smaller JavaScript payload size, which is gonna be able to load a lot faster on end users devices, you're gonna have a better performance overall with the built-in and redesign of how Preact and its internals work as a framework replacement of React. And you can stand it in straight up, just plop it right in take out React and you get Preact and you're gonna get a better overall end user experience. Now, one of the questions is, what if we do this with a an existing app, right? So you are an existing React, would you replace that with Preact? The answer is you'll still get some benefit, you will, uh, just not as much because we are comparing the idea between signals and hooks are gonna be a little bit different compared to the Preact and React, you're gonna get a lot better performance out of the Preact approach. However, if you just 
migrating an existing project and you're hoping to see a significant reduction in file size, you're only really going to see maybe a 50 kilobyte overall reduction in the gzip payload for JavaScript, which is a lot. So say you have a large single page application that has a half a megabyte of JavaScript, you can reduce that by 10%. So that's a significant boost right there. One of the main advantages of starting with Preact as your framework for your single page web application, you're going to see a better performance overall with using Preact.js compared to React.js. If you're using the Preact signals versus the alternatives for React, if we just take a quick peek here, we're just gonna look at the results and their outcome. We do see uh, quite a significant different, like a 3x improvement on performance overall in the entire application, as we are going to see with Preact, which is a nice boost in performance using that signals approach. The challenge is, of course, React uses more of a, a hook and other kind of approach, which is just architecturally just a little bit slower. Now, we are talking about average time in microseconds, right? So this is not a lot of compute time. And if you have a very fairly simple front end, you're not gonna to see too much of a difference, but you will notice it if you start with Preact signals instead of uh, React alternatives. Now also, and you're wondering, maybe there are other advantages of Preact in terms of performance. Now we typically, um, so we have here at top, we have React and then we have Preact signals. Like, so these first two columns, uh, we, we can see would be some interesting comparatives. Now I'm looking through here, they're basically the same for everything else for these types of scenarios when comparing the two. So we're not gonna see a whole lot of difference um, overall in terms of performance. Uh, we see that there are comparables and there's some improvements, uh, which is nice. So you are gonna get a better overall experience with Preact, but it's not like a whole bunch, right? So is it worth justifying spending time to migrate your existing React application over to Preact? And the answer is, uh, yeah, if it's if you are seeing significant slowdowns in your application, it could be a quick win to help make that performance improvement. However, overall, it's, um, it's not a major difference when in comparing the performance overall. When you're starting a new single page web application project, from scratch, brand new, you have a choice of starting with Preact or React. Obviously, the industry standard is gonna be React. You wanna always go with React. It's got all the components and things and everything you need to get started, and uh, it's the largest by far. Now, Preact is identical, essentially, to React and basically a swap-in from the start. So you might want to choose Preact uh, if, you, if you're starting a brand new project because you'll have the best possible outcomes in terms of performance and its compatibility as well. We look at the difference between the foundational library of React, the bundle size is around 60 kilobytes compared to the Preact, which is around six kilobytes. So that's a significant difference out the gate. You're also gonna get a better performance overall with Preact's file size, it's beneficial. Really, when we're comparing the performance of both libraries, we are seeing that React and Preact are more head and head. These days that we do understand that React has the capability to improve its overall compiler to give you a better outcome and result for smaller and smaller file sizes and smaller and smaller uh, overheads when it comes to memory utilization and performance during rendering. React is making improvements there, so that is helping making Preact a little bit less necessary, though Preact still wins from the performance perspective. Of course, without using Preact's compatibility layer, uh, you're gonna miss out on a few additional features that are going to leave you behind. Uh, so you will miss out some of those. Uh, if you add in the compatibility layer for Preact, which adds just a little bit more into the ecosystem with React, uh, you're gonna add another chunk of uh, kilobytes into the default project and it will slow it down as well. So now it might make sense for you just to use React just from the start and then maybe, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of hard to choose in that case, right? If you know you're going to stay simple, then just keep it in the Preact zone, right? You might as well. React has a lot more around it in terms of its development. They have more resources. It's meta, right? It's that, That's Facebook. They're going, they've invested large teams uh, to build and perform better and better compile times and other tech with React because Facebook and Instagram and other face, uh, Meta's properties, they take advantage of React a lot. They take a lot of advantage of React. So they want to make sure that that's continuously improving. Um, and so it might make sense to, you know, yeah, it's 2024, 
build with React as a starting point. So if you're doing a small project, right, so internal tool, uh, something like that where, you know, you want just good overall experience, but you're not really going to be uh, taking it to like an, an ongoing long running. Uh, uh, Preact is good for that. Looking for React, you're going to see uh, better, la better for larger applications, right? So if you're building a full on business, you might want to start with uh, React and just try to keep it as efficient and fast as you possibly can. What if you have an existing React JS project and you want to improve its performance? You might be able to do that with Preact.js by swapping out the uh, React DOM layer and the React core foundation library with Preact. It's possible to do, and you will see improvements. Actually, a quite a notable amount of improvement, right around the 10% mark or so is what you will get from it. Now, I was looking at see the file size reduction on the library. You need Preact and Preact Compat library, uh, and that's going to add around, uh, well, it's going to stay around 10 kilobytes of minified JavaScript. But with uh, with React, you're going to see around that 60 kilobyte uh, as gzipped and minified as well. So that's a 6x improvement on file size right there, right? So 6x, that's 600%? What is that? It's just uh, amazing from the core foundation files, even including the compatibility layer. So you are going to see an advantage, though, if you have a very large project, right? So something like over a half a megabyte worth of JavaScript uh, due to all the different React components that you've You've, uh, you've added in from dis different ecosystem uh, components and also your own internal, you won't necessarily see that much of an improvement, right? This is where the 10% comes in. So say you have something like say 600 kilobytes. Uh, if, you, uh, if you change that out with Preact, you're only gonna see a 10% improvement overall. Uh, from a file size perspective and a slight improvement on performance though not really a whole lot when i'm looking at the benchmarks so it's it's really you are going to see improved load times maybe 10 percent ish right that's what i'm looking at here uh, so it still might be worth your while especially if you're having a sluggish experience from all of those react components um, you will still have that development flexibility with the compatibility layer and you're still going to be able to pull in a lot of uh, components from the react syst ecosystem even though you are now using preact uh, and it's fairly easy to migrate uh, they have a lot of different migration paths they have four different options uh, which includes um, web packed and uh, several others in terms of what build tools do you use in order to build your React JS application? So here's here's an example, right? So you're gonna install your Preact and Preact compatibility, and then you're gonna alias React and React DOM here in order to uh, take swap out the React code base with the Preact code base. Rollup is another one here, right? So we got Rollup as another build system. Um, so overall, we're gonna see just some some minor performance improvements if you do this. Uh, you'll see a slightly smaller overall payload size, uh, though you're not going to, uh, it won't go much further than that, right? You're, you're only gonna get just, just a touch of a performance improvement, but it might be enough. It might be enough for you to make that choice uh, to swap in Preact for React.